Today, we're going to look at six swallowtail species that you're likely to find in Michigan, discuss how to identify them in the wild, and what makes each one special. Let's get started. What makes swallowtails unique is, of course, their tails. You'll notice on each one of these species a pair of tails extending off the hind wings, which is exactly how they get their name. They resemble the forked tails of the swallow family of birds, as in barn swallows or tree swallows, for example, and there's actually evidence that these tails evolved to divert attacking birds away from the butterfly's vital parts. So when a bird comes in, it's drawn to the tails, which break off easily, and the butterfly can escape. That said, you may see some in the wild that are missing a tail, like this one here. Could be missing both, but a lot of the times you'll find them with both tails intact. Swallowtails overwinter as a chrysalis, and therefore they do emerge a bit earlier than most other butterflies. You can find them flying as early as April all the way through late September. They generally have two broods throughout the year, and a lot of the times you'll find that the ones in the spring are a bit smaller than the ones that come later in the summer. And a lot of swallowtails are quite a bit larger than most other Michigan butterflies. And that is especially the case for the first butterfly that we're going to look at. This one is not only the largest swallowtail species, but it's the largest butterfly in all of Michigan. Appropriately named, the giant swallowtail can extend as much as six inches. Now we're going to take a good look at all of these butterflies from both the top and the bottom. With swallowtails especially, it's important to be familiar with both because they often pause to nectar at something and they'll be fluttering their wings open and shut like this. And therefore, you may only get a brief look at the butterfly from any given angle, so we'll cover some quick characteristics that you can use to ID them. That said, let's take a closer look at the giant swallowtail. This butterfly is predominantly dark brown or black, and you'll also notice rows of yellow spots that form an X up here on the forewing. From underneath, this butterfly is predominantly yellow, and you'll want to notice how the yellow on the margin of the wing extends almost all the way to the edge. That'll make more sense when we get to the tiger swallowtail, but just take note of how this looks. This butterfly is relatively uncommon. Its range is limited to the southern half of the lower peninsula. It uses prickly ash for a host plant, so you'll often find it in forests or woodlots if they contain the host plant. Occasionally you can find it in gardens or along roadsides as well. Again, due to its size, this butterfly is fairly distinct, but overall it is uncommon. Our next species, however, is arguably one of the most recognizable species in Michigan. This is the tiger swallowtail. Right off the bat, you'll notice its characteristic tiger stripes up here on the edge. These stripes are actually thought to break up the outline of the butterfly, which makes it harder for predators to see in the wild. You'll notice how the coloring is a little bit variable. The blue patches on this butterfly are more pronounced, which is common in the females. In the males, this lower patch will be predominantly black. In Michigan, we do have two species of tiger swallowtails. In the southern half of the lower peninsula, you'll find the eastern tiger swallowtail. While in the northern half of the lower peninsula and the upper peninsula, you'll find the Canadian tiger swallowtail. It's better to rely on where you are in the state rather than trying to tell them apart visually. If you are in the area where their ranges overlap, about in the middle of the lower peninsula, it is possible, although difficult, to tell them apart. If you're in that range, or if you're just curious, I'll show you what to look for. You want to look at this row of yellow spots along the margin. You'll see how they're distinct individual spots on this butterfly and this is an eastern tiger swallowtail. On the Canadian tiger swallowtail, these will often blur into one continuous line. So take a look at some pictures of the Canadian tiger swallowtail and see if you can notice that difference. Again, in the wild, when these are flying and moving around, that's gonna be very difficult to see. So if you can, rely on where you are in the state rather than trying to tell them apart visually. Other than the giant swallowtail, there's really nothing this size with this much yellow in Michigan. Therefore, if you can tell those two apart, you'll be in pretty good shape. If you recall, what you want to look for with those two species is this band along the edge of the wing. Notice how there's a sort of thick band of black that goes along the wing. I'll bring back the giant swallowtail for a second and 
be able to see that difference. So depending on how its wings are folded up, you may or may not see the tiger stripes on the tiger swallowtail. Nonetheless, you can look for that black width along the edge of the wing either way. Again, nothing else this size, this much yellow, so if you can tell those two apart, you'll be in pretty good shape. There's one more thing to look out for with this species. There's also a dark form of the female tiger swallowtail. You may wonder, why is there a dark form? And that's because this coloring mimics the pipe vine swallowtail, which is toxic to predators. So in that way, this mimicry does offer a little bit of protection for this butterfly. That said, while overall the dark form is fairly uncommon, it is more prevalent where the pipe vine swallowtail also occurs in Michigan. Let's take a closer look at it. You'll notice the yellow has been replaced with a dark brown. You can still see the tiger stripes sort of poking through on the top. Those are much more pronounced underneath. Take a look at that. You'll also want to notice how there's a single row of orange spots on the wing. That's going to be important when we get to the other dark colored swallowtails. This one is generally a bit larger, especially compared to those other dark colored swallowtails, but again, not quite as common as the yellow form. The tiger swallowtail is fairly widespread. It prefers black cherry as a host plant, so really you can find this anywhere with black cherry growing. That could be near woodland edges, uh, woodland openings, or even backyards if they have black cherry. And with that, we'll move on to our next species. The black swallowtail is arguably one of the most common swallowtails that you're going to find. This butterfly uses members of the carrot family for host plants. Most commonly, queen ants lace in the wild, but you can also find the caterpillars munching on uh, parsley, dill, or carrots if you have them in your garden. That said, they are common in gardens, farmland, and especially old fields where you find Queen Anne's lace growing. You'll notice again, the coloring is a bit variable between the two. You'll notice more pronounced blue patches here, while the one on the left, yellow patches are gonna be quite a bit thicker. This thicker yellow coloring is fairly common in the males, while the blue patches are more typical of the females. The most important thing to notice is this yellow dot at the top of the wing. This spot is going to set it apart from the other dark colored swallowtails, especially the spice bush, which is very difficult to distinguish. From underneath, you're going to want to look at these rows of orange spots. You'll notice how there's two complete rows of orange spots. Again, that will make more sense when we get to the spice bush, but this top row is where you really want to focus your eyes right away. With that said, we'll keep moving right on to the spice bush swallowtail. This one is fairly common as well. Um, you'll notice right away that it looks very similar to the black swallowtail that we just saw. You'll often find with this species that the patches on the females, as shown here, are a little bit more blue, while the patches on the males have a little bit of a greenish tint. The spots along the wings are more of a bluish whitish, rather than yellow in the black swallowtail. You'll notice from the top, you don't see the spot that we saw on the black swallowtail. And when we take a look at underneath, look at this row of orange spots. You'll notice how it's broken in the third slot from the left, and you find a blue comet shape here. I'll bring back the black swallowtail for a second, and you'll see how you can easily tell those apart. So you'll see the black swallowtail is a little bit smaller as well, but maybe you're looking from a distance. Your eyes should go right to that row of orange spots. From the top, you'll want to look for that yellow spot on the black swallowtail. The spice bush swallowtail uses sassafras for a host plant. It will also use spice bush, but sassafras is preferred. Therefore, you'll often find it along wooded edges or even out in the woods, especially along trail sides or road sides. It can be difficult to distinguish from the black swallowtail, but once you've seen it a few times, you'll, you'll start to be able to tell just based on the flight pattern and especially on the size between the two. 
Now the last two swallowtails that we're going to look at are a little bit more uncommon throughout the state. The zebra swallowtail is very recognizable. This butterfly is white with black stripes, or maybe it's black with white stripes, but I'll let you decide. You'll also notice two red dots down here at the base of the wings, and underneath there's going to be two red bars as well. Again, you'll see the characteristic zebra stripes. You'll also notice how the tails on this species are quite a bit longer and skinnier relative to the other swallowtails that you've seen. This butterfly uses pawpaw trees for a host plant, so you'll often find it in floodplain forests, um, especially along forest edges and stream margins as well. It is limited to the southern half of the lower peninsula, and overall, again, this butterfly is, is fairly uncommon. Likewise, the next species we're going to look at is relatively rare throughout the state. This is the pipe vine swallowtail. Unless you're in the southeastern portion of the lower peninsula, you're not very likely to see this. If you do, however, you're likely to recognize it right away. It's very flashy, iridescent patches, and as I mentioned before, this butterfly is toxic to predators, and so these flashy patches serve to warn predators of that. You'll notice that holds true underneath as well, along with a row, a single row of orange spots that almost form a pipe shape. Females of this species won't necessarily have those flashy patches on the wings, but you will see blue along the body, and you can look for that single row of orange spots. This butterfly prefers Virginia snake root for a hose plant. It will also use Dutchman's pipe, which is often planted in gardens. Therefore, it is occasionally seen in gardens, but again, overall, this butterfly is very uncommon in Michigan. As I mentioned, this butterfly is toxic to predators, especially birds. The caterpillars acquire defensive chemicals from the host plant and those persist into adulthood. This particular coloring pattern serves to warn predators that it's toxic, and therefore the other dark colored swallowtails that we've looked at take advantage of that coloring and they mimic the pipe vine swallowtail. That said, they do all look fairly similar, so we'll recap how to tell those all apart. If you recall, we have three other dark colored swallowtails in Michigan. A lot of the time, size can be a good indicator, We'll cover a few quick tricks to tell them apart. Now if you're seeing these from above, pay close attention to the spots on the forewings. The black swallowtail is going to have this inner yellow spot which is not present on any of the others. If you don't see that spot, focus your eyes on the spots along the margin here. On the dark form of the tiger swallowtail, they're much thinner and more dash-like while on the spice bush, they're more pronounced and round and circular. Additionally, the tiger swallowtail will often have yellow colored dashes, while they'll often be more of a white or bluish white in the spice bush swallowtail. Now from underneath, if you recall, these two species both have two rows of orange spots, while these two only have a single row of orange spots. So if you see it from underneath, and you see two rows of orange spots, Look for that little missing tooth, or the blue comet shape, which will distinguish the spice bush and the black swallowtail. Now if you see a single row of orange spots, you have two options, the tiger swallowtail and the pipe vine. You're likely to see those blue, flashy patches. If not, you'll most likely see the tiger stripes on the eastern tiger swallowtail and be able to tell those two apart. Lastly, we'll recap our two yellow species, and then we'll take one last look at all of these together. All right, so now we have the giant and the tiger swallowtail again. From the top, very easy to tell apart. From underneath, you can look for those tiger stripes, or if you can't see it because of how the wings are folded up, look for that little black width that goes along the edge of the wing. I'll bring all the butterflies out for just a second. And then, as a little bit of a bonus, we're going to look at one more species that's not a swallowtail, although you may confuse it with one. This butterfly also mimics the pipe vine swallowtail, and that would be the red spotted purple. This butterfly is quite striking. A lot of the times, depending on how the light is hitting it, it can look more black, and you can see, generally, how you could easily mix that up with a swallowtail. 
Underneath, you're going to find orange spots as well, but much closer to the body. Again, the red spotted purple is not in the swallowtail family. It's more closely related to the viceroy, although you may mix it up with the swallowtail. It's just something to look out for. All right, I hope that you found this video to be helpful and that it helps you start to be able to identify them in the wild. If you'd like to test what you learned, be sure to check out our quiz on swallowtails. And thank you for watching.